Okay, now in this video, we'll, we'll be discussing about some OSI and OSI model and TCP IP protocols. Now, OSI model is a reference model which provides uh, provides some method on which is going to explain some how the communication process happens between two or more networking devices. Now, initially, there was something called OSI model and TCP IP models. Now, what these models will provide is Let's take an example. There is a device uh, sending a traffic here, sending a request to Yahoo server, and the reply is coming back. Now, once the reply is coming back, and this entire process is explained in a detailed way by this OSI model and the TCP IP models. Now, practically, we use TCP IP protocols, but when it comes to uh, theoretical concepts, theoretically understanding how the communication happens, this OSI model is going to define or it's going to tell how the communication happens in each and every layer. So this entire process is divided to some layers and it's going to define each and every layer is going to define a set of functions. What happens exactly inside? So model around which the internet is developed and it has uh, four architecture layers. Uh, that's, that's what about TCP IP. TCP IP is having four layers. The same process is divided into four layers. Whereas OSI is a theoretical model which was, which was developed to tell how the communication happens between any of the two networking devices. Now, uh, theoretically, we learn OSI model, but when it comes to practical implementations, we use TCP IP models. Now, let's, let's try to understand these different models. Now, there are seven different layers inside the TCP IP. It's a theoretical model which was developed by ISO, International Organization for Standardization, around 1980s, introduced around 1980s. I'd say it provides seven layer architecture, which is going to explain how the communication is going to happen between two or more networking devices, or it can be within the organization or it can be over the internet. Now, those, those layers, we call them as physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport, trust session, presentation, and application layers. Now, each layer is going to define a set of specific function, what happens inside your networks. So let's see one by one. So uh, theoretically, when we discuss, we start up with application layer. So let us start up with application layer. Now, before we go to application, now let me just give some idea. These three top three layers, we call them as software layers. Now, mostly this, these three layers, the functionality happens uh, inside your program generally. And the bottom three layers, we call them as hardware layers, where your physical devices are involved here. So that's what we call as hardware layers because most of your hardware devices are involved here. Whereas these top three layers where you have most of most of the things happens inside your protocol or inside your program. The transport layer is going to control the flow of information and it's going to interconnect both these layers again. So more on these layers, we'll come back again more on this individual layers again. So first let us start up with application layer. Now, application layer, the major job is to provide the user interface. Just like take an example, if you want to access internet. So what, what exactly you require? You need a browser, you need a browser software. If you want to access any uh, web, web traffic, you need to use a web browser. It can be a Mozilla or it can be any other things. Or if you are if you're accessing, sending and receiving some mails, probably will be using some either mail servers like Outlook, like Outlook Express, this kind of things. But these are the actual applications which we use. But behind this application, there are some protocols like HTTP. When you're sending and receiving the web pages, there is a backend protocol called HTTP, which will allow you to access the web pages. Now, this HTTP protocol is going to uh, provide some interaction or, or it's going to provide some interface where you can connect to that particular service. Like when you're sending and receiving the mails, Probably you might be using something called SMTP protocol, which will allow you to connect. Okay. And when you're sending and receiving some files, probably FTP protocol. So like that, we have a big list of protocols. Again, we'll be getting into more on those protocols, uh, but let us get into some layers as of now. <coughs> now each and every protocol again is identified by some different port numbers. Now, each and every service is identified with different port numbers where you have 0 to 1023 port numbers are reserved for specific applications like HTTP is reserved on port number 80, FTP is on 21, SMTP on 25, Telnet on 23, and TFTP on port number 69. 
So something like that. Whereas you have some unreserved port numbers. Unreserved port numbers are like uh, if you are hosting some services, we can still use these unreserved port numbers. Probably uh, if you if you remember, we discussed something called NAT. In the NAT, it uses different port numbers for different uh, different translations again. Or it can be uh, used for hosting any specific services. We can use these unreserved port numbers. So port numbers are just a logical channel or the logical connection uh, or logical communication channel which identifies a specific service. When, when, when the information is carried, it will write down a specific port number also in that. Now the first thing, application layer provides an interface to connect, but it is not still sending. Then the next job will be the presentation layer. Now this presentation layer is going to define a specific format for the data. So it's going to define in what format your data has to be sent. Whether you need to send in a normal American standard format or in the binary format or in which format. So that depends upon the type of the application you are using and the kind of the web page you are accessing or kind of transaction you are doing. It depends. Let's take an example. Um, I'm accessing my website in a normal uh, website. Maybe I'm accessing some google.com and a normal site. Uh, probably you, when you type this particular website, you generally see something called HTTP. But if you are do accessing some, some, some banking websites or PayPal websites, probably you'll see something called HTTPS. Now, what's the difference between these two? HTTP is a normal, normal web page, which is not secure. But whereas HTTPS represents secure, where your data information, whatever you access over there, it will be in an encrypted format and the data is going in an encrypted format. The entire web page is encrypted, secure. But whereas in a normal cases, it's not like that. So again, whether you want to send the data in a normal text or encrypted text, it all depends upon the type of the sites or a type of the services you are accessing. But in most cases, I'm using some examples relating to internet just for easy understanding, but it can be on any network, any kind of networks we can say. So if you are sending some, uh, some uh, American code or, or European code, these different types of codes in the text, whether you are sending some images and which, which format you are sending, it can be voice or video files. So that's what we call as encoding and decoding. Now when the information is sent, before it sends, it's going to encode in a format which the receiver can understand. That's what we call as encoding and then the receiver receives it and is going to decode that particular uh, information. And also encryption, decryption happens here whether your data has to go in a clear text or whether it has to go in encrypted text. That's what we call as encryption and decryption. And then also compression and decompression. So compression means uh, compressing your information into to reduce the size. Generally, PPP supports a compression on that link, which means when it sends information, it will compress the information into smaller sizes before it sends on the WAN links. So it depends again types of the implementations, type of the links. Now the presentation layer in simple, it defines in what format the data has to be sent, in which format the data has to be sent. That's what you can see presentation. So it's, it's presenting your information and it defines the format for the data. And that format is completely based on the kind of the application you're using or the kind of the service we are using. Now the next thing, session layer. Now session layer is responsible for creating, maintaining and terminating the sessions. Like uh, if you just get back to the previous two layers, now the application layer is going to provide the interface and the presentation layer is going to define the format for the data. Once uh, it initiates the applications and defines the format, now the session layer is going to build a session between the source and the destination. Just like, you know, if you, if you want to make a phone call between uh, you, you you want to talk to your friend now before you actually communicate you need to create a session that's what you need to build you need to dial November that's what creating the session and then we are going to maintain the sessions which means we are sending the information and then finally we are going to disconnect the call that is disconnecting the sessions now the same thing can be happening based on your files you are hosting some files to the FTP server and then you create a session first and then you send your files and then once you're done, you disconnect the session. Now this is something done by a session layer. 
which is going to maintain it deals with a session on the interaction between the different applications there are some different protocols which will be used like network file system nfs is a common uh, protocol which we use and sql rpc these are all session based protocols which are responsible for building maintaining and terminating the sessions again you might be accessing some web page google.com you send the request to the google server web server and the web server replies back but before you uh, send the request or reply back it has to build the session so that is what done by the session layer now these three layers uh, typically we call them as in case of tcp ip kind of implementations we call them as tcp ip application layer uh, application layer in case of tcp ip it creates initiate the process and then defines the format and then and then create a sessions and there are some specific protocols which we use in tcp ip like we have some protocols like ftp tftp smtp and 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 so on these are the different protocols which we use here so we'll be discussing more on these protocols in our next video then also we'll continue with uh, with with some more uh, different other layers as well